What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be checking out some of the new and interesting knives that are coming soon to Blade HQ. I actually talked about this on a Knife Guy episode that I love coming soon pages because it allows me to kind of get a reasonable glimpse at stuff that's coming soon and I know you guys want to know too. Metal Complex, we can totally just do this ourselves. Why do we need to sit through a whole video of you talking about what you think is interesting? Yeah, you're totally right. In fact, I will link this page exactly right at the top of the description in this video so that you can do that if you'd like to. I would recommend that you do because I might be going over things or missing things that you guys want to check out. So yeah, that'll be right at the top. I'm going to be highlighting stuff that I think is interesting, making a few comments here and there and telling you guys kind of what I think based on some of this stuff I've actually handled uh, a little early and some of it I have no idea. So I'm going to be giving my thoughts. If I think something super cool, I will link it down uh, in the description individually so you can go right to it. I know a lot of you guys like to be updated. Not everybody goes through this kind of stuff as often as I do. I am constantly constantly going through stuff like this. So you guys seem to like this enough that I want to keep doing it. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find my Patreon link right down in the description as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Ah, uh, new Real Steel uh, G5 Metamorph Imperial Edition. That's okay. I, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Cursaw, uh, oh, I know I'm going to pronounce his name. Is it Jens Anso? I'm, I guarantee I messed that up. Uh, the capsule was kind of cool. I handled this. Uh, Kai USA sent me, or well, Kai, uh, or ZT Kershaw, however you want to say that, sent me uh, some stuff. They let me pick through some interesting, or some stuff that I thought was interesting, and they let me like kind of handle it and look at it. I did handle this one, uh, this one right here. Um, it's got a unique fidget factor, which, I mean, and this isn't unique to Kershaw. This style of blade has, um, you know, existed in the past. Um, something I think some of you might find interesting beyond the price. Um, it's not anything special in terms of material. The price is pretty good. Um, it's not a dagger ground blade. So for those of you who like the idea or at least the novelty of an OTF because it's technically an o it is it's an out the front knife but it's not automatic and no the other side of that blade is not sharp it's also uh 1.9 inches making this style of knife uniquely legal in a lot of places specifically for people who can't like I know there's a lot of people like I'd love to buy a freaking combat troodon but I can't because it's illegal for a billion reasons right so short blade non-automatic not a dagger uh, that's specifically who that was designed for and it's not expensive, right? So that's kind of cool. Yep, this guy. Um, so I was a big fan. I talked with Benchmade about this. I was a big fan of the aluminum bailout so much more than the Grivery version of it. I just really like that knife. Now the standard bug out, it's obviously a good knife. It's still a recommendable knife. I just don't personally like it because I hate the feeling of grivery or the, the way that they do that on the scales, right? It just doesn't feel solid and it doesn't give me that feeling of confidence that some people just don't, like there's a lot of people who are like, I, I feel fine with it, right? That's fine. Um, I did like the titanium mod that I did a lot better and for probably about the same reason, I feel like aluminum is going to also feel more solid. I also really like this raw aluminum look with the milling on here. That's cool. And then they have, it looks like magenta. Yeah, kind of cool. I, I'm kind of digging this, right? I mean, if you like the bug out, but you're also like me and you're like, eh. M390 in aluminum, it's pricey, right? We all saw that coming, but it looks cool. There's some there's some intricate milling on this. This is USA made knife. It's neat. Yeah, I think this is cool. Uh, I'm, I like that they're experimenting and doing different things and doing different versions of the bug out. So that's something I'll link down below for you guys. Oh boy, we, uh, I'm sorry, I got my uh, internet during the Triassic period. Anyways, um, Benchmade 945 Mini Osborne. Uh, so that's coming. I don't think that's necessarily brand new. I think that's been around for a little bit. Morio Jumbo's coming. Uh, the Spyderco PM2 and Crewware or the Crewcarta PM2. Uh, yeah, so Crewware is, um, and it was interesting before I really understood anything about the composition, which I still don't. If you want to learn about knife steel composition or basically the potential for performance, go to Knife Steel Nerds. Laren Thomas is a godsend and he has an enormous wealth of information. Nothing, I can't compete. So, Go learn about uh, crewware there, uh, definitely, but crewware is awesome. 
price is a little, ugh, you know, but okay, uh, it looks cool. It's one of the nicer looking PM2s and with crew wear, undoubtedly an excellent, I think crew wear is a good uh, composition for that geometry. And PM2 not being, you know, the most durable geometry out at the tip, especially. Uh, stretch 2 lightweight, that looks cool. I think we've talked about that before. The Kershaw Strata, I was... I was tempted to um, take a look at that one. It's huge. Um, I think if I had read the specs more carefully, I might have asked to look at it. It's a 4.5 inch blade. That's a big knife. Um, might be interesting to some of you considering it is $62. I'm interested to see what the steel is on that. Oh, it's D2. Okay, so there you go. $62.95. That's not a bad price for D2. Kershaw generally does have good fit and finish. I'm going to guess that is a... Uh, that's one of the China Kershaws, but I don't know that for sure. It just doesn't list it there. So, oh boy, internet today. Fantastic. The new uh, Benchmade Claymore. I believe I will be able to take a look at this one. I think Benchmade has set. I can't remember. This might be one that I'm going to be able to show you guys. It might be one that's coming. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, the one thing that's I'm kind of uh, it's it is a lightweight U.S. auto, but they're using grivery on the handle scales. The material doesn't bother me nearly as much if it's backed up by some type of liner that gives it a more solid feeling. I'm just that part of my brain that's like, if I'm going to spend that much, I want it to at least feel solid. I mean, obviously, grivery is plenty durable. I've said this a million times. But if it doesn't feel solid and I'm spent, right? It's not like the more money you spend, the more solid the knife should feel. I just can't get rid of that part in my head, right? So if you can overlook that, then maybe you'll, you'll think that's a lot cooler than, than but it, I don't know. It looks like the, it's got a, a similar profile to the AFO. Well, that's, that's part of the reason why I'm kind of intrigued. Kershaw Highball XL. Yeah, handled this one. I was very impressed with it. I think I've said that on another video before. Um, so that's one to watch. That is D2. It's very smooth. Um, the original, I know you're thinking XL is 3.3 inches. Well, the original highball was smaller, apparently. I never handled that one, but there you go. I was very impressed with that one. That's a steel frame lock and D2 steel running on bearings. Very nice. No, it's not assisted. It is manual and it's got that little slot in there. Uh, so you can do the reverse flick, all that fidgety stuff. Zero tolerance 0990, carbon fiber. And yes, that is steel on the frame. And that was kind of a bummer for me. It's a cool uh, profile. It's obviously supposed to be reminiscent of the, I think it's the 999, which I never actually handled. Um, some people I think will find that interesting. It is coming soon, if you didn't know, along with more uh, 0762 uh, tune detent system knives, right? That's this one right here. Now these were available for a while and then they went away and then apparently there's more coming soon. Um, the Warncliffe Delica 4, I think that's a great idea. CRKT, I'm sorry. Yeah, CRKT, woo, six bit driver. Has, okay. That's kind of neat. Uh, moving on, let's see. More of the Benchmade Auto Facts will be available. I handled this one. It's great. It's just really, really expensive. That's S90V aluminum and carbon fiber. Really expensive. Spyderco Tenacious Lightweight in FRN S35VN. I think I've got one of those coming to the channel, so I'll be able to check that out for you guys as well. Uh, this guy right here, let's highlight this. A lot of people confused. This is the new full-size Adamus. Uh, and this variant is automatic. And this variant is crew wear, much like the smaller one that I have. <laughs> this has got to be the most hulking automatic knife. Listen, if you've never handled one of Benchmade's Axis Lock automatic knives, they are surprisingly powerful. They're also a little jarring because your hand is not in the typical position that it would be on a side opening automatic knife with a button, a uh, firing button, right? You got to pull, which means you're dependent on the grip between, if you're, if you're like me, you're dependent on the grip of your uh, last three fingers and your palm to hold onto the knife. If you're not holding onto this knife, it will fly out of your hand. It will go to the freaking mesosphere if you're not holding onto it. This is powerful, right? Big, 8.9 inches overall, 3.8 inch blade, thick blade stock, very robust axis lock, very robust scales. It does have a safety on it, which I think is out of the way. It's using crew wear. I think this is awesome. It's obviously going to be an expensive knife. Now, if you're thinking, I would love that if they did it man in a manual version, right? They they are. They're doing both the manual and the automatic Adamus uh, in crew wear. And they do come in a wide variety of colors. What I've seen from Benchmade's catalog is OD Green G10, 
black G10 and tan uh, G10. I think this is the tan. No, this is the olive, okay? Then the blades will come in an FDE coating, a tungsten coating, or at least that's the colors. I don't know if tungsten is actually the base of the, of the, you know, the coating. And then, uh, so, so black uh, tungsten and, um, and uh, FDE or flat dark earth. So that's cool. And I think any combination there. Um, here's the, uh, I think the standard, this is um, one of the ones that I think will be, is that I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So here's the full size manual Adamus. That's just like my mini, but it's 8.9. <laughs> they put 8.9 on the auto and 8.93 on it. The, did they, or did I miss that? Anyways, this is less expensive, 238 bucks. Um, I think that if you don't need the automatic feature, then this is going to be especially appealing to you because I think for what this is, just judging on, you know, uh, Benchmade's current level of fit and finish, I think that's a pretty good price. I think that's going to be one of the better price knives coming out of Benchmade. Uh, Crewwear, definitely a good hard use steel. Uh, again, the Adamus, probably, arguably their most hard use folding knife. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, that or a combination of black and FDE. Um, I don't know. I doubt Benchmade's watching, but ooh, if you send me one of these, <laughs> I would really like that black, the black skills with the FDE blade. But I, I can't remember if that's an actual combo or not. If I see it, I'll point it out. But uh, yeah, that is one to watch. I think uh, people will be pretty pumped about that. So when you see 306 on a full size Adamus, it means it's the auto. It'll all obviously say auto. And if you see 238, it's going to be the manual version. Uh, let's see here. Is this the new OM? Yeah, let me make sure. I'm going to look through here and take a look. There was another one I, that was the exact picture that, yeah. I think this is the one right here, the new Benchmade OM uh, automatic knife. I'll tell you why this is appealing to me. They offered to send this to me, and I, I would like to um, take a look at it, and I'll tell you why. It's not big. It's pretty small. This is about the same size as, I think, the UTX-75 from Microtech. Now, it's aluminum, and it's S30V. I really wish they had gone to 20CV to be a little bit more competitive with Microtech, but if you like the idea of a smaller, right, let's say you're limited on blade length, right, this is a smaller OTF, um, and it is fairly competitive at the price point. I want to say the UTX 75 comes in at what? 240, 250 bucks. So it's, it's in that ballpark. I just really wish they had gone to, um, a 20 CV, but it does look cool. And I've, I've not been thoroughly impressed with Benchmade's automatic knives in the past, just in terms of the, the feeling of lockout, the feeling of deployment just never felt, but I, I want to check it out because I want to see where they're at. Right. So that's kind of an interesting one, maybe something to watch. Benchmade has been very impressive, like by comparison with other companies for 2021, their stuff that's coming out has been pretty darn appealing. I mean, a lot of it is of course the Adamus, but there's definitely some cool stuff in their line for sure. And I, I doubt we've seen you know, even a fraction of everything that's coming out amidst all these different companies. Something I wanted to point out here. Um, I don't know how uh, Blade HQ sorts their coming soon page, but a little bit of an indicator, right? I remember when the Rhino was way at the back. And I also remember when the SOCOM elites were way at the back, right? Um, so the SOCOM elites, even though they still don't have pictures, have moved way up on the list. What are we at? What are we at here? We're at which which page are we at? We're at page four, right? There's some stuff that's obviously going to be coming pretty quick, but page four on coming soon. It looks like Microtech SOCOM elites are actually making progress to coming back. I spoke with somebody on Instagram the other day who showed me a conversation they had with Microtech, and Microtech said, "Yeah, we're still doing these. We're trying to get them ready to go." So. If you've been waiting on a SOCOM Elite, right? Big thing, I should have said this right at the beginning of the video. Sign up for email notifications, right? I know some of you guys have told me it doesn't always work. It's still your best bet, right? Sign up for notifications. If not, you know, uh, Blade HQ, there's other retailers, right? Sign up for notifications. That's the best way to do that. If you just sit and wait for it to fall into your lap, it's never going to happen. This stuff is really popular right now. Uh, people are wanting to get their hands on it. So, you know, be ready. Absolutely. I don't need to tell you guys that, but yeah, uh, definitely. I wish they had pictures. I'd like to see those. Uh, moving on here. What do we have? Meh, cold steel Talwar. I can't see it. I really, I want pictures, right? Because these are all SOCOMs. Um, ah, here we go. 
Yeah, this VV Imperium. Ooh, that looks good. 85 bucks for the ones in um, Damascus. Curiously, $68 for the ones that are not. This looks like a larger... Um, oh, wait. No, it doesn't look like a larger, but it's nearly the same size overall as the Badlands Vagabond and Ordis, which I think are two of the greatest budget knives ever. Of course, the BB doing their normal thing where they it's just a slight variation on other stuff that they've made. Um, here's what's interesting. The blade steel is Nitro V. Um, so that might explain why the price is a little bit higher. Nearly eight inches overall with a three and a half inch blade and it is a thin profile thumb stud opener with what looks like a forward choil. That's pretty cool. I like how that looks a lot, actually. How'd you guys do the clip? Okay, we got the swoopy. Yeah, nice. Is there a bill there? I'm wondering the shadow. Is it a bill or is it continuous rise? Listen to me. Uh, oh, it's a front flipper. Yeah, okay. There you go. Add some spice to that soup. Oh, that was a stupid... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um... I, I got to tell you, my my in, my my instinct is to edit that out, but I think I'm going to leave that in there just so that people can laugh at me. We got some more. Uh, we got some of these uh, Imperiums coming with some shredded CF. They should have done a version of this with both the shredded uh, CF with silver, or shredded CF with gold, carbon fiber, uh, and Damascus. But that would push it. That would be a, a over a hundred dollars Civivi, right? So you've got a choice there. Some my my Carta and Damascus. You got G10 and Nitro V. Or you have the gold shred and what I'm guessing is also Nitro V. Yeah, it's also Nitro V. So there you go. That's kind of neat. Uh, I know there's people who collect CVVs and at that price, what no matter how flashy it is or not flashy it is, under 100 bucks. yeah, I think that's going to be a um, user for a lot of people. Uh, the Wii Upshot does look interesting. Nice, simple profile. I'm going to guess and hope that that is M390 at this point. Yeah, it's 20 CV. I was gonna say at this point we need at this price point we need to see 20 CV because S35 VN. I think it's still plenty appropriate at 150 or less, but we're seeing S35 VN drop at 100 bucks in some places, especially when it's not manufactured in the U.S. If we're looking at a U.S. knife in S35 VN. It's obviously still gonna cost more money, right? It's still that's a super steel, right? But if I'm saying if it's a, if it's a Chinese made knife, I don't want to see S35 VN at 200 bucks plus. I want to see it more around 150 or less, right? Penny Knives X series. I know that those are super popular. It looks like that's a Raptor front flipper um, with uh, looks like a Warren Cliff or Reverse Tanto, something like that. So there you go. Moving on here. A lot of these I have not seen yet. Hey, by the way, uh, Artisan Cutlery, Aryan. Um, these are going to be 200 bucks. Um, and again, <laughs> listen, I, I immediately have to contradict myself. So I guess in some cases, if the design is good enough, if I like the knife enough, you know, I'll choke down a steel that I don't want to see at a certain price point. So I literally just said, I don't want to see S35 VN at 200 plus. I said, you know, when I reviewed this knife, I'm like on their website, it's like 265, 270. I'm like, nah, that should be about 200. And it is apparently going to be 200. It's also going to be an S35 VN. I wish Artisan Color would have uh, would have done this in 20 CV, but let me let me stress this: the design is good. Also, there were a lot of people going. Leon Ma would be mad about that. Leon Ma would be mad about that. And the more I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, no, Artisan Keller left a comment under my review and said we actually talked with Leon Ma, and he said thumbs up, go ahead. Um, so apparently that's that's what that's that, right? Um, so yeah, it does look similar. Um, this is excellent. It is a really excellent and very smooth knife. Very, very w well made. I, I wish that it was either less money. I wish that this was more like 150 for S35 VN and titanium in my card. It is titanium on the other side. Or I wish it was 20 CV and 200 bucks. But it's still recommendable. This is still a knife that I think you guys should check out. I think the vast majority of people who decide to pick it up are going to be very, very pleased with it. And again, S35 VN is one of my favorite steals of all time. It's an excellent user steal, right? Um, let's see here. The Fox Knives Yaru looks incredibly similar to the Pilar. Okay. Tigris is definitely interesting. I handled this. It's a freaking monster. <laughs> These are not going to be super expensive. They're going to be, I think, around the $65 mark. I think. Don't know that for sure. Uh, eight and a half inches overall. This is that big monster sort of folding battle cleaver that people seem to like, um, or call it a cheese foot, whatever you want to call it. ARRPM9. 
which seems to be a pretty darn good steal for the price point. I think it's one of the only powder steals available uh, in this budget territory right now. So it's essentially, or it's very similar to Powderform's 9CR18MOV, which uh, is an ingot steel and that people have found is very preferable um, at this price point. I've, I've got my Ortis in 9CR18MOV and it's pretty darn good. Um, it's not based on extensive use or anything like that. I'm not really the guy to go to for that. But um, yeah, it seems pretty good. I know you guys want me to talk about fixed blades. I'll talk about this one. <laughs> oh, it's a nice looking fixed blade. It's a fixed SBR. That's cool. Protec? What? <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. A Protec fixed blade. Uh, S35VN with textured and contoured G10 scales. Six and a half inches. That's a nice little EDC. Listen. You put you put Protec on it, I'm going to look. You put Les George on it, I'm going to look, right? So yeah, this is cool. Uh, not everybody's in the market for a small fixed blade, but I like the SBR, which literally, if you don't know, if you're thinking that looks a lot like the Rock Eye or the, um, or the uh, VECP, um, SBR means small bladed Rock Eye. That's what that stands for. Um, that is an original design from Les George. So that's really cool. I like that. I don't know anything about Condor. I don't know anything about, I feel like I've heard that before. I, I just don't know anything about Condor at all. Um, let's see here. What's, what are we getting to? I'm looking for basically back to when, you know, models that look like maybe they're from the last time I did this. We'll go a couple more pages and see what else is in here. I don't want this video to run too long. Kaiser Beglitter in, what's this? Let's take a look at the hang on oh it's n690 okay so that's just a carbon fiber begler 59 bucks right uh i'd i'd go for the 99 dollars variant that's m390 which is i think available right now you guys should check that out um here's something cool the kaiser <laughs> we have the kaiser mini sheepdog in titanium with no flipper tab and it's a thumb stud opener and honestly, the most interesting version of the Mini is this guy right here. Now, I have one of these coming, the Vanguard version of this that's less expensive. That's a nice looking and probably very, very ergonomically uh, preferable, at least for me. The smaller knives, don't give me a flipper tab. Give me some type of forward choil so I can get my whole hand on it, right? Make it easy to manipulate with some kind of opening slot. Check, check, check. 6.125 inches overall, 2.6 inch blade. Uh, CPM S35 EN and titanium. Yeah, it's probably going to be 200 bucks. <laughs> so I'm going to be contradicting myself again. <laughs> um, but okay. Kaiser likes S35 EN. It seems like they're doing a decent job with it. Um, and then another, this is going to be uh, very interesting to a lot of people. <laughs> the XL, the XL sheepdog in titanium in 20 CV. There we go. That's going to be expensive. <laughs> nine and a quarter inches overall i had this i had the vanguard version of this g10 and 154 cm it is very enjoyable just because it's huge and ridiculous is it usable yeah absolutely are you gonna is everybody gonna want to be you know dragging this boat anchor around with them every day probably not but i mean it's still cool right yeah this looks nice 20 cv titanium they didn't do the holes all the way through which I doubt it'll say prototype on there, which I kind of like. I like that it's solid right there. That's pretty cool. I imagine those all those uh, fasteners are going to be at least T8. Yeah, that's neat. If you didn't know that that was coming, they have not done that, the XL size in titanium. They've not done a premium version of that yet, so that's pretty cool. Kaiser Mini Critical, Vanguard Mini Beglitter with, it looks like a Warncliffe blade and resin uh, on the scale. That's kind of neat. Let's look at this. No idea what this is. Uh, N690 and some, I don't know, some type of resin. I'm not really sure exactly how they do that, but it, it's kind of neat. If you really like the bag litter and you like the idea of a reverse tanto or worn clip, I will probably call that reverse tanto. <laughs> I don't, sometimes I look at stuff, I'm like, I have no idea what to call that. But yeah, it looks kind of interesting. I think we're probably coming up on some stuff that I've looked at before. So I'm just waiting for something to jump out at me. And no, 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 no. Sorry. 
I'm sure some people want, what's your criteria, dude? Like why, why, why do some things jump out at you and other things don't? I don't know. They just do the brazen. I think we're getting back into an older area. Yeah. I've looked at this stuff before, uh, elementums, button lock. They're coming soon, right? CVVO step. Uh, we'll go one more page. Yeah. Okay. I think we've pretty much looked at everything. Yeah. We've, we've seen this before. So anyways, guys, um, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. Like I said, the stuff that I highlighted that I thought was super duper cool, um, I will uh, link down below. Definitely like the element, uh, elements and button lock. Um, but that's going to be pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys maybe found something that you were interesting. If I missed something or I didn't go over something that you wanted to take a look at, like I said, this page exactly, the coming soon page for Blade HQ will be listed right at the top of the description. So you're welcome to check that out. Um, thanks so much for watching this video today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Middle Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.